I want to tell one story in some detail, talking particularly about Canadian embassies. These are the Canadian government's on-the-ground representatives in the region who have privileged access to what's going on in mining affected communities and in related policy making. They help us to understand how the Canadian government tolerates and accepts Indigenous and human rights violations in order to enable and defend the mining interest, industry's interests. We gained these insights uh, with some of our partner organizations through an access to information request about the Canadian Embassy in Mexico and Black Fire Exploration in Chiapas that operated a mine for two years before it was shut down. First, we see the embassy enable Blackfire to start up its mine by putting pressure on the state of Chiapas when there was not clear community consent for the mine and the company was fa facing permitting challenges. We also saw the embassy then troubleshoot for Blackfire when protests grew against the mine about which it had lots of information. We also saw how it ignores threats to local activists. In particular, local leader Mariano Abarca traveled with a delegation to Mexico City and spoke with a Canadian embassy official on film. He stated that the company had broken promises, that its mine was doing environmental damage, and that there were armed workers intimidating him and others opposed to the mine. <laughs> Within a couple of weeks, Mariano Abarca was arrested off the street while he was making preparations for a forum against mining. The embassy knew that Abarca was arrested on the basis of spurious allegations made by the company. Despite this, despite Abarca's te testimony about armed workers and despite 1,400 letters sent to the embassy expressing dire worry for Abarca's life, the embassy's response focused on ensuring the continuity of the company's operation. Six weeks later, Abarca was murdered, the mine was shut down on environmental grounds, and it came to light that the company had been making direct payments into the personal bank account of the local mayor in order to keep down protests. Then we saw the embassy continue to defend the company. The embassy distanced itself, not so much from the company, but rather from the investigation into the murder, refusing to meet with affected groups. Some two months later, it sent a fact-finding delegation to the community and spoke with them. And the report, its report about unfulfilled promises, lack of community support, environmental damage, and corrupt practices was sent to the highest echelons of the Canadian government. Nonetheless, it continued to advise Blackfire about how it could sue the state of Chappas under the terms of NAFTA um, after, it had, after the mine for having closed the mine. A few years later, when Mariano Abarca's brother and one of his sons took these findings to the Canadian Embassy in Mexico, they heard the same old story, that the Canadian government encourages companies to respect local laws and maintain high standards of corporate social responsibility, when in fact the embassy's active and unquestioning support may have acted as a disincentive for Blackfire to comply with local and international law. When they asked the Canadian Embassy, at a minimum, to not ignore threats against other community leaders in Mexico who are being threatened and criminalized, the Embassy said this would be tantamount to intervening in Mexican sovereignty. The Embassy did not think, however, that intervening the, with the state of Chiapas, however, to put Blackfire's mine into operation was intervening in Mexico sovereignty. There are, other likely, there are other such examples, and likely to be many more, since the Canadian government has now made it policy to channel 100% of its diplomatic core to back private interests, something they call economic diplomacy, which given the predominance of Canadian investment in the mining sector, means yet more support to mining companies in the region, despite the increasing risk that defenders run of being demonized, criminalized, threatened, and killed. This is also just one of the ways through its acts and emissions that we see the Canadian state supporting Canadian mining companies through thick and thin when communities and workers bring complaints and when there are serious questions regarding the legitimacy, the legality, and the compatibility of their operations in this model of mining with the rights of Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities. Thank you very much. <laughs>